This video is about the relationship between vectors and data frames and how we can move back and forth between those two data structures. So far we've learned about two general ways to store data in R, vectors and data frames. Vectors store a single set of values with the same type, whereas data frames store multiple values, one in each column, that, ha that can have different types. These two ways of storing data are related to one another because a data frame is actually a bunch of equal length vectors grouped together. So we can extract columns from data frames and turn them into vectors, and we can also make a data frame out of a bunch of vectors that we've already created in R. We'll start by looking at how to extract a column from a data frame as a vector. And there are several ways to do this. We'll look at a couple of examples using the portal data and the surveys table that we've been working with. So let's go ahead and load that table uh, by giving it a name, surveys, and assigning it the output of read.csv with the file that we want to load as the argument. One common approach to extracting a column into a vector is to use the dollar sign. The dollar sign in R means give me a named piece of something. And so we start with the object that we want, that's our surveys data frame. Then with no spaces, we type a dollar sign, and R Studio will actually show us all of the named pieces of this object. And in this case, those are just the names of the columns. And we could select one at this point or type in the rest of its name. And so let's go ahead and look at the species ID column. Let's extract the species ID column. So we'll type species ID. And so this says from the surveys table, give me back this named piece, give me back the species ID column. And if we run this, we'll see that we get as output a vector of all of the values from the species ID column, or at least the first few uh, hundred of them. We can also do the same thing using square brackets. Now remember that in R, square brackets mean give me a piece of something. And to do that, we would start with the name of the table surveys. And now we're actually going to use two sets of squared brackets. So I'm going to press the opening square bracket twice. We now see we've got two sets of square brackets. And then in quotes, the name of the column that we want to extract. So species ID. And if we run this, we'll see that we get the same output. There are two important things to note about this. First, species ID has to be in quotation marks here. That's because we're not using dplyr. And so we have to use quotes in this base R context. And we have to use two sets of square brackets because if we use one set, that is base R's way of selecting columns from a data frame. And so if we only use one set of brackets, we'll actually get back a data frame with one column instead of a vector. So that's how we take data out of a data frame and make it into a vector. We can also go the opposite direction, which is to take some vectors and use them to build a data frame inside of R. And so we'll use uh, the example that we've used a couple of times now, uh, where we have some data on sites and population densities. So we'll go ahead and make a couple 
of vectors to work with. I'll call the first one sites and I'll assign it uh, a vector which we build using the C function and then we'll have site A, site B, site C, and site D. And then we'll create another vector density which we'll assign a vector to again using the C function and the densities we'll use are 2.8, 3.2, 1.5, and 3.8. And I've run both of those lines using control enter and so we can see that we have a density vector and a sites vector. If we want to build a data frame from that, we use the data.frame function. And it takes one argument for each column we want to appear in the data frame. So let's go ahead and combine these two vectors into a data frame. We'll call it density underscore data and our assignment operator and then the function is data dot frame parentheses and now we can type in the name of the vectors we want for columns so sites comma density and then if we run this we'll see that we have a new density data data frame over here in the global environment and if we click on that we'll see that it has uh, our data from our two vectors. There's one other thing that we can do uh, when creating data frames, which is that if we have a column that we want to add, but we just want to add a single value for that whole column, we can do that when we're creating uh, our data frame. And so, for example, let's say all of this data was collected in the same year and we needed to have that year in the data frame. So let's create a new table. We'll call it density data year assignment operator. And now we're going to have the same basic data frame call, but I'm going to add something to it. So we'll say data dot frame. And now for uh, the first column, let's say year is equal to 2000. Okay. And then we'll include sites and then we'll include density. And there are two things happening here. First, this is setting the name of the column. So this is saying, let's have a column with name year. And in it, let's put the number 2000. And because this is a single number, it will get filled in uh, in all rows of the data frame. And so if we go over here to global environment and look at density data year, we'll see that we have year all the way down, our sites, A, B, C, and D and our densities. So that's the basic idea behind how vectors and data frames are related to one another and how to convert back and forth between them. A data frame is a set of equal length vectors that are grouped together. We can extract a column from that data frame and put it into a vector using either the dollar sign or two sets of square brackets, and we can combine vectors into data frames using the data.frame function, which takes one argument for each column that we want to create, and those arguments can either be a vector, which will become the full column, or a single value, often with a name associated with it, uh, which will then fill that value in for all rows in the new column that's being created.
right, I haven't finished writing this. Just ad lib it. We'll do it live! 